This audio podcast is brought to you by San Diego's, the San Diego Online Society, an educational network for San Diego's internet, software, and telecommunications professionals. I'm your host, Steve Verkless, versatile creative engineer. You can learn more about me at G-U-R-K-L-Y-S dot com. Today's guest is Aaron Fulkerson, co-founder and CEO of MindTouch. Aaron is a leader in social knowledge bases, product help, and enterprise collaboration. As CEO of MindTouch, Aaron has grown the company from a small open source project to a widely recognized brand and social business software with millions of users across the globe. Aaron, welcome to the show, and why don't you start by telling us a little about yourself? Sure. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate you taking the time. Well, I started MindTouch with a friend of mine that I worked with at Microsoft Research doing distributed systems research. And uh, what we'd originally set out to do was to make a, um, you know, an open source alternative to SharePoint, the one that would be uh, much more social and collaborative in nature and right. uh, uh-huh. have a focus on web services, meaning that it's much more extensible and scalable. And uh, in, in what, we, what we did is we launched an open source project and with Within a year, it became one of the uh, top five open source projects in the world, as was ranked by SourceForge.net back when that was the only site ranking SourceForge projects uh, out of 250,000 of them. And very quickly, what we we realized was we didn't really want to compete against SharePoint. (laughs) Yeah. Good so plan. and and Microsoft, right? Uh, so what we what we uh, we realized was, hey, you know, there's a really interesting use case that a lot of our users and customers were um, innovating with MindTouch, and that was around um, technical and product documentation. And um, what what uh, our customers discovered even before us. Well, I guess I guess we discovered it too because we were using our own product for our technical and product documentation is, you know, there's a real opportunity in the market for technical and product documentation innovation because nobody's nobody's improved it for over 10 years and uh, mm-hmm. it delivers sure. um, some strategic value to companies because the technical and product documentation is a great way to drive site traffic and customer engagement. So that's what we've really focused on. Did you always want to be an entrepreneur and how old were you when you went into business for yourself? Well, I remember the first time I heard the word entrepreneur, uh, I was I was probably in like second grade and my mother told me that that's what I should put down for her occupation on some school form. I thought it was a made up word at the time and I guess um, to ask if I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, I mean, I didn't know any different. Um, that's kind of what I grew up in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my first business was uh, um, in the fourth grade and I made... Um, Play-Doh at home that was flavored and edible, and wow. I sold them in little eggs. And I called it edible glue gunk, and uh, made a tidy little profit because it was a um, fantastic, unfortunately sh- but short-lived uh, uh, fad at my elementary school. Uh, and I cornered the market on it. It was fun. <laughs> That's great. What a, what a fabulous story. How was the FDA approval? <laughs> I don't think I could uh, have gotten FDA approval. (laughs) What advice would you give someone working in corporate America who wanted to start their own business? I never really worked in corporate America myself. I mean, sure, I worked at Microsoft, but I worked in a very small research team that reported directly to one of the executives for the company. So I've never really worked inside of a large company. Um, Frankly, it's a little difficult for me to... uh, get inside the head of somebody working in a large company. I guess, I guess the thing I would tell them is, um, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you start your own company? Um, what risk is there? You know, the risk for me is working for somebody else, doing something that I might not be very excited or passionate about. Uh, and the payoff for starting your own business is just so big. Um, the payoff for not is you work a monotonous job and then at some point get downsized. Uh, it's just a no-brainer. Uh, honest perspective on that. Uh, that's great. Thanks, Aaron. If you were charged with fixing the U.S. economy, um, what are the three things you would change? The challenge that we face is we've de-emphasized education. We've put emphasis on things that are just less important. I mean, we can build schools and we can focus on education or we can build prisons. And for me, the thing that I find so troubling is – um, the fact that the educational system in the United States is is consistently ranked at the bottom of industrialized nations, um, and I would immediately put a great deal of emphasis on improving uh, the educational system in the United States. Anything else? It's always struck me as odd that that the business owner is burdened with 
having to pay for the employee's health insurance. You know, I'm, you know, Mind Touch is a small business and um, burdening me uh, with paying for my employee's health insurance makes as, about as much sense as uh, burdening me with paying with my employee's car insurance. I don't understand where this comes from and it just seems like an obvious thing that the government should cover instead of small businesses. What has been the most rewarding moment in your time as an entrepreneur? I don't know that I could pick out like one individual moment that was especially rewarding. Um, you know, recently I got to go to the G8 in uh, Paris, the EG8, and um, that was very rewarding. In November, I was invited to the White House for a summit. That was very rewarding. Wow. But I think the the main things that stand out is being able to help and mentor my coworkers and um, help them realize their career goals is always incredibly rewarding for me and something I, I really value. Another thing is, is as an entrepreneur, it, it affords me freedom that I wouldn't have if I were working for somebody else. Um, freedom that uh, often pays off is me having more flexibility to spend time with my family. Yeah. How many hours do you work a week and, and what keeps you up at night? Some people have clear separation in their life between their work life and their home life or other life. And uh, for me, I have one life that's all intermingled together. And um, what's important to me is achieving the best possible results for my life, you know, being the absolute best that I can be. I think people need to aspire toward greatness, however they define that, and uh, be less concerned about how they partition their time, set goals and achieve those goals. Uh, so the second part, uh, what keeps me up at night, I think it might be a function of me sleeping, you know, five or six hours at most a night. Um, not because I can't just because, uh, I can get by with that little sleep. Sure. And, uh, you know, in those quiet moments where some other people might be, you know, kept awake, I guess you could say achieving my maximum potential is what, what definitely, uh, keep me up. If you had the opportunity to start your company from scratch, would you pick San Diego's location again? And if so, why? Yes, I think it would. It's, it's a challenging environment for a software company. There's not a lot of talent. And most of the talent that we've hired, we've imported from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but it offers a fantastic place to live. I'm, I'm always grateful. I was just walking through, you know, my co-founder and I, uh, we, we have several meetings during the week. And, and on Saturdays, we get together for coffee and you know, we're walking around Balboa Park. It's 70 degrees, drinking coffee, talking over the week. And we're, we're just really fortunate. To Life is good. Here. Uh, life's great in San Diego. What character traits are you looking for in people that want to work for you? Well, when I'm looking at people who I'd like to work with, uh, there's, there's several things I look for. I look for people who are open-minded, honest, and uh, passionate about what they care about, um, you know, a level of enthusiasm that typically is higher than most people. I like people who grew up in family run businesses. Uh, they just work their asses off like I do mm -hmm. and they care more than most people. And I mean, generally what I, what I really look for is in Buddhism, there's a concept of a beginner's mind, one in which people approach problems without pretenses and it tends to make people more successful. Uh, they don't go in with preconceived judgments. Their, their past experiences don't cloud their decision making. Of course, their past experiences help in their decision making, but they don't cloud it. And uh, finding people with beginner's mind, a beginner's mind is something that's uh, really, really valuable to me. What do you think are three of the most important character traits an entrepreneur should have? I think I've covered important character traits for entrepreneurs when you ask me about people I'd like to work with. Right. Um, so specifically, having a lot of passion for everything in life, not just the work you do, but everything in life, that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. the, the best entrepreneurs I know are just very passionate people. Another thing is, is uh, I mentioned the beginner's mind. I think that's very critical. Uh, it's a critical skill for entrepreneurs. It helps you to manage better. It helps you to problem solve better. You can look at uh, problems and people in many different ways without getting stuck in a rut on your particular thinking, and, which often can trip you up. You need to be hardworking. This is, some people think that's tied in with passion, and, and it's, it's, really, it's really not. I mean, I know a lot of passionate people that are perfectly fine sitting on their, their, their asses all day and theorizing. Um, you need to be able to roll up your sleeves and get shit done. I guess I'll throw in a bonus one since I've already covered sure. two in a previous question. You just got to be fearless. I look back at mistakes I've made, and 
it almost always tracks back to one thing. I was scared. I was scared to do something or I was scared to take control of something or I was scared of going in a certain direction. You just need to be fearless. And, and it's such an important trait. That sounds uh, really interesting, uh, Aaron. Can you give us an example? Well, you know, as, as I was uh, building MindTouch, you know, I've, I've done pretty much every single department within MindTouch. I've done pretty much every single job. And uh, sometimes I was slow to take control of a particular aspect of the business and would bring in somebody else or try to defer to somebody else's expertise. Mm -hmm. um, and I would do so to the detriment of the company. Uh, you really need to, you know, for example, I would, I would defer because I was scared. You know, you need to be able to establish a baseline for success. So you know what success means. You know how to gauge performance. Aaron, where do you see your company in five years from now? I'm certain that five years from now, MindTouch is going to be making a lot of customers happy. And I'm talking about our customers' customers. Uh, you know, we've, we've really focused on innovating technical and product documentation, and our customers have found it to be really effective in driving up customer satisfaction and increasing top-line revenue, lowering support costs. And uh, over the next five years, I, I'm, I'm confident we'll be completely saturating this market around technical and product documentation, and uh, we'll be making a lot of customers much happier with the products that they've purchased. Excellent. That's uh, been a real pleasure to have you here, Aaron. I appreciate the insights into uh, how you got started and how you are continuing your success. Thanks again, Aaron. Yes, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate your time. That wraps this edition of the Sandios Podcast. Be sure to check the Sandios.com website regularly for future podcasts from local innovators and business leaders. Until then, this is your host, Steve Gerklis, versatile creative engineer. I can help you with podcasts, video production, technical sales training, and adrenaline pumping events. G-U-R-K-L-Y-S dot com. Sandios, the San Diego Online Society. It's the fastest growing network for entrepreneurs and professionals in internet, software, and telecom in San Diego. To attend our monthly events and receive our regular podcast, simply apply for your free membership to Sandios through groups on LinkedIn today. 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 today.